famous museum. Read all about it. Philco Mysteries on the Air. Your chance to play detective. Win huge cash prizes in this newest, most exciting, most fascinating mystery contest. Every week at this same time, over this station, your Philco Radio Tube dealer brings you transcribed the great Philco Radio Mystery Contest. $50,000 in cash for the winners. $50,000 in cash for solving simple mysteries. Weekly prizes. Big, grand prizes. Nothing to buy. Anybody can enter. You may win this contest of skill. The big, free Philco Mystery Book tells you all about it. If you haven't already got yours from your Philco Radio Tube dealer... Get your copy as soon as possible. Lists all the prizes. Shows you how easily you can win. Contains official entry blanks. You cannot enter this contest without this free book. So get your copy now. Here's Philco Radio Mystery Number 2. If you already have your Philco Mystery Book, be sure it's open to pages 6 and 7 while you listen to the program. Listen carefully. Take notes. Follow the action on the diagram you'll find on page 6. Phil Cole, the beautiful girl detective, is going to solve a mystery. And maybe you will win a big cash prize for showing how she solves it. You're a detective. You're on a case. It's the missing masterpiece. It is nine o'clock in the morning, and the National Museum of Art has just opened its doors for the day. Old Dennis Maloney, one of the trusted guards, is coming on duty at his regular station, the Gallery of Valuable Dutch Paintings. Just as he is entering the Dutch room... Dennis is greeted by the director of the museum, Dr. Benson, who has been making his early round. Good morning, Dennis. Oh, good morning to you, Dr. Benson. You're looking healthy and happy as usual. Oh, as for me, health service, only me two feet that bother me at all. Twenty-five years of walking around guarding oil paintings have flattened them out like two sheets of tin roof. Oh, that's too bad. I'll see to it that you get more rest periods during the day. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Benson. You know, I always enjoy coming into this room... Those old Dutchmen certainly knew how to paint. Oh, indeed. And the... Hello. What's this? Well, what do you mean? Why, look here, sir. This little table in front of the benches. Why, there's a crack in the glass top. Oh, somebody must have dropped something on it. Maybe so, but that glass wasn't cracked when I went off duty last night at five. Say, I'll bet it was that goofy artist, Mr. Young, that done it. Young? Was he here when you left last night? Yes, sir. He had a permit to paint in here until six o'clock. And when I left, he was sitting on this bench uh, making another copy of this little vermeer. He, uh, well, uh, uh, heaven help us. Well, what is it, Dennis? Well, look, uh, this vermeer, there's something different about it. Well, you're right. This is only a copy. Oh, the, the, the real one was here last night when I left. That vermeer cost the museum $200,000. Oh, it, it was that artist, fellow Young. Remember, I said he was here last night? Yes, yes. And you say he was copying the vermeer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He always does. He's made more than one copy, too, during the past year. Maybe this is one of them. Mm. Has any other artist made a copy lately? No, sir, no, sir. Not in the last five years. But shall I go into the hall and phone the police? No, no, wait, wait, Dennis. I'll do the phoning myself. We can't accuse Mr. Young hastily. We won't call the police, though, just yet. I'll get a friend who'll work quietly. Yes, sir. Here's the phone, sir. Oh, thanks. Uh, Dennis, have you ever heard of Phil Cole... Cole? Cole? Oh, wasn't there a Detective Cole some years ago? That's the one. He was famous the world over for his work in crime detection. Phyllis is his daughter. Since his death, Phyllis has been carrying on her father's work. Hello? Is this Phyllis Cole? Hello, Phil. Uh, this is Dr. Benson at the museum. Someone has stolen our Vermeer. Yes, uh, the woman baking bread. Can you come now? Splendid. Goodbye. Dr. Benson, I've taken the liberty of bringing my friend Tom Taylor with me. You see, Tom writes mystery novels. The boy's pretty good, too. I'm afraid he uses me as a bloodhound to sniff out plots. Why, oh, Phil, darling, I pursue you because you're a charming woman as well as an efficient plot hound. Oh, that's enough, Tom. <laughs> I'm here on business. Now, Dr. Benson, please tell me everything. Well, I entered this room an hour ago with Dennis Maloney here. He's been guarding our Dutch masterpieces for years. Indeed, and I have, Miss Cole. And the first thing we noticed was a crack in the glass top of this small table. I see. Go on, please. What are you going to do with that magnifying glass, Phil? Well, I'm going to examine the crack in the glass top. Go right on, Dr. Benson. I'm listening. Well, then we discovered that our Vermeer was gone. And in its place, only a poor copy. Oh, Dr. Benson, I found something interesting in this cracked tabletop. Yes, Phil? Now, Dr. Benson, 
The veneer was a small canvas, and that's why you hung it fairly low, about seven feet, I'd say. That's right. The person who took it from the wall pulled this little table over and stood on it. That's what cracked the glass. I found some grains of sand wedged into the crack in the glass. Whoever stood on this table had been walking through sand not long before. That sounds like an excellent clue. Uh, Tell me this. Was anyone in this room after Dennis went off duty last evening? Yes. There was a rather shabby artist who frequently comes into copy our premiere. His name is Nelson Young. The museum closes to the public at five, but Young had one of our special permits to stay till six. Do you suppose this copy is the one that he made? Well, I can't say. Uh, Dennis, are you certain this artist, Mr. Young, was here after five last evening? Uh, Yes, ma'am, he was. I examined his his late permit, and when I went out, I left him sitting there on the stationary bench, painting away with his long, gangly legs doubled up under himself like a pretzel. Who checks up on the late permits when people leave the museum after the regular closing hour, Dr. Benson? The night watchman at the side door. Well, could an artist with a large portfolio easily walk right out with the picture? Yes. Well, who in addition to this chap Young had late permits yesterday? Well, there were two others. I picked their permits up at the office while I was waiting for you to arrive. Here, uh, their names are on them. Oh, thank you. Marsha Bedell. Uh, Who's she, Dr. Benson? She's the daughter of old Amos Bedell, the retired uh, banker. She's about 19, only child, and as in most cases of that kind, her father's a bit too indulgent. Uh, uh, She's a spoiled young lady, and if I were her father, I'd turn her across my knee. And that shouldn't be difficult either, because she's a tiny little thing. Uh, this other permit is signed by Richard Duncan. What sort of a chap is he? Well, he's a very fine portrait painter. Has a mania for collecting, too. Now, I hesitate to say this, but I believe Duncan would mortgage his soul to gain possession of a fine painting. Hmm. Duncan sounds like an all-round good fellow. Uh, he's just the kind of a chap most men instinctively dislike. <laughs> you mean he has a way with the ladies? Exactly. He's the lean, dark type. Always looks well in evening clothes. Tall, good-looking. Well, Dr. Benson, I think we'd better get those three over here immediately. Nelson Young, Marsha Bedell, and Richard Duncan. An interesting trio. I think we may find them very enlightening. Please don't be so impatient, Mr. Duncan. We'll be finished here as soon as possible. But, Miss Coe, I tell you I left an important client to answer this insulting summons. And I had to give up an appointment with my hairdresser. Don't worry, Miss Bedell. Your hair looks lovely. Well, maybe it does, but I got it full of salt water yesterday at the beach, and it feels very uncomfortable. You know what sand and salt water do to a girl's hair? Or don't you remember? (laughs) Yes, I think I do. Now, I'll be as speedy as I can. Well, Mr. Young, you've had sufficient time to examine that copy of the veneer. Is it one of yours? Yes. Yes, it is one of mine. I recognize my own work, of course. But the Vermeer, I can't realize that it's gone. It was so beautiful. If only Vermeer himself could have heard you saying that, it would have made him so happy. Oh, you needn't sneer, Duncan. After all, you bought one of my copies. Is that true, Mr. Duncan? Yes, I did buy one of his awkward daubs. Daubs? How can you talk like that? Just because you waste your time painting the vacant faces of the rich, you think you can Shut talk... Shut them out. Now, now, be quiet, you two, please. Yes, yes for please. goodness sake, stop please, fighting. Please, please, everyone. Uh, Miss Coe is doing her best. I apologize, Dr. Benson. Proceed, Miss Coe. Well, thank you, Mr. Duncan. You've admitted that you purchased a copy of the stolen veneer from Mr. Young, yet you called it a dog. If you thought that, why did you buy it? He continually whined about his lack of money. So I finally gave him $100 and took the copy so that I could have some peace while working here. Well, Mr. Young, have you sold any other copies? Yes. Marsha Bedell bought one, too. She praised my work. Poor fool. I only bought it for the same reason Mr. Duncan bought his. I pitied you. I see. I see. It was all just charity. Mr. Young, how many copies of the veneer have you made? Only three. Mr. Duncan's, Miss Bedell's, and one which I kept myself. Can you identify this copy left here on the wall by the thief? No, I'm sorry, but I can't. All three copies were practically identical. Uh, Come, Miss Cove. We're wasting valuable time. Surely you've discovered some clues. What are they? Well, the person who took the painting from the wall stood on this table, cracking the glass top. The person also obliged us by leaving a few grains of sand in the crack. Is that all? Yes, that's all. But aren't there any fingerprints or anything like that? There always are. Unfortunately, Miss Bedell, the fingerprints we are looking for are probably on the stone of the mirror. Uh, Now, Mr. Duncan. Well? Where is the copy that you bought from Mr. Young? I sent it to an acquaintance of mine in Amsterdam. A Dutchman with very little artistic perception. And where is your copy, Miss Bedell? I gave mine away last Christmas. To whom? Uh, my my sister. She lives in Buenos Aires. I see. Now, Mr. Young, where is the copy which you kept for yourself? I put it in storage with my furniture. 
Now, I have here the permits which the three of you turned in last night. Mr. Young left the museum at 5.35. Marsha Bedell went out at 5.50. And Mr. Duncan left exactly at 6. Are those times correct? Yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Young, where were you working between 5 o'clock and the time you left? I was in this room, of course, studying the beautiful Vermeer. I was here all afternoon. And you, Miss Bedell, were you in the museum all afternoon, too? Oh, no. I didn't feel very well yesterday, so I stayed in bed at home until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then I got up and had lunch, wrote some letters, and came here in a taxi. I got here about four and spent the whole time in the room across the hall, sketching some Rodin figures. There, you have my entire day. Thank you. Mr. Duncan, you were the last to leave here. How dramatic. I suppose you want an account of my actions? If you please. I worked at my studio until noon. After luncheon, I came here to the museum and spent the balance of the time studying the Matisse in the French gallery. Voila. Doubtless, you will now proceed to turn me over to the police. No, Mr. Duncan. For today, at least, the police will not be interested in you. My job is finished. It's quite obvious who took the veneer from this room. Who, Miss Cole? Who is the thief? Perhaps Miss Marsha Bedell can explain her motive more clearly than I can. Oh! Marsha Bedell? Well, Miss Bedell? Yes. Yes, I took it. But I still have it. I'll bring it back. I swear I will. Only don't have me arrested. It would kill my father. I only took it to self save him. He's lost everything. He needed money so desperately. Give me a chance to help bring it back. Please bring me a chance. Give me a chance. Well, you never can tell. That Bedell girl might have got away with it, too, if it hadn't been for Phil Coe, the famous girl detective. You have just heard Phil Coe discover who stole the missing masterpiece. How do you suppose she found the guilty person? That should be easy for you. You heard what happened. You know everything Phil knew. Why did Phil suspect Marsha Bedell? Can you give three reasons for her suspicion? Sure you can. Then write down those three reasons just as well as you know how and enter the Phil Cole Radio Mystery Contest. $50,000 in cash prizes for the winners. Over 2,000 weekly prizes and 51 mammoth grand prizes. All the details are fully explained in the Philco Mystery Book, which your Philco Radio Tube dealer will give you free. Be sure you get your copy of this book. It contains the official entry blanks. You cannot enter this great contest without this free book. Besides, it will help you win. It's filled with diagrams, explanations, and all the rules and details. Follow carefully all the contest rules as they are explained in the Philco book. It should be easy for you to answer the contest question. Maybe your skill will make you a winner. Listen every week at this time over this station to Philco Radio Mysteries. Don't miss a single program. Ask your Philco Radio Tube dealer for any other contest information you want. While you're there, too, better have him check up on your radio tube. $50,000 in cash. That's a lot of money. Next week, you have another opportunity to win your share of it. Phil Cole, the girl detective, is going to solve the mystery of the death ray tube. Listen and see how good a detective you are. Hey, you. Yeah, you, listening to the show. You know the one thing that's been around since those cave guys were living and still around? Art, right? They used to scratch it into the walls. Forget about it. I know you ain't going to do that, so I got something for you. You want to decorate your cave? Well, your house. You want to have something really nice decorating your walls, right? Yeah, of course you do. I got a tip for you. Check out artbyweez.com. Her art is gorgeous.
You can even get high-quality prints of her art starting at only 10 bucks. Go there, or drop into her studio at 700 Diamond Avenue in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Tell her Dan sent you. She'll give you 10% off. Hey, I'm looking out for you.